its presentation of computing and the lymph uh, hydrodynamics during heavy impulse test on normal and hydropic vestibular labyrinth models. Thank you very much. Good morning to everyone. We are at the end of the Congress, so I will speak about this. Well, uh, yeah. well, at this point, I don't want to discuss, but uh, we are agreed that Meniere's disease, the most common physiopathologic finding is the endolymphatic hydrops. But uh, I think we all must to question what are the effects of endolymph endolymphatic hydrops in vestibular function tests. So, a few years ago, a uh, Australian group, led by Lake McGarvey, gave us a nice and really elegant theory about how the endolymphatic hydrops could affect a caloric test. The hypothesis was that the energy transfer that it's produced during caloric test is not uh, present in the hydrobic labyrinth because there is an energy dissipation inside of the dilatation of the of the semicircular canal due to hydrops. This well, I fall in love of this theory. It could be true or not, but we decide in the next year to well. Let's uh, go to compute a model, uh, hydrodynamic and thermodynamic model about this hypothesis. This was the theoretical model, so we compute the thermodynamics about this, and as you see, in a oh the laser is okay. In the in a normal duct, we have a linear energy transmission that will give the pressure that will take the pressure to the cupola. But when there is uh, high drops, the energy dissipated, dissipated inside the canal and there is no energy transfer that came to the cupola. So this is the theoretical by uh, the Australian group and this is the result of the computer simulation. It's uh, nice to prove how this is confirmed but the thermodynamic models. Well, so the next question to, for us was what is happening in the NDB heat test? So we put to work together again. We will try to do the best computational uh, work to understand what is happening during the heat test. First is to select the endolymph hydrodynamic calculation method to calculate the movement of the solid. It's easy because the Newton and Lewis uh, can be applied in a solid because we have only one variable that is time. All the body moves at the same, but in a liquid, we have the same variability, but also because they have no morphology, we have a second. So during the movement, we have a second component is that is the anatomy. It's not easy to solve this. The most powerful uh, at this moment mathematical resolve of these are the neighbor strokes differential equations that are very hard to resolve, but they is the best approach to let us know how a liquid will move. So we select this uh, approach uh, as a vestibular input for our model. We take the real hydroscope recorder uh, overheats of the heat movement made by the uh, experiential examiner. Thank you very much, Lace McGarvey, for your contribution with your nice overheats. And the third point in our, in our model is the vestibular scenario. We decide to use a real geometric model of the vestibular uh, organ. So, we do a micro CT scan of a temporal bone. Then we subtract digitally and reconstruct the endolymphatic uh, ducts and uh, structures inside him. And we put this together to we have our normal uh, real anatomic model. And we develop it one, more, one model with endolymph uh, endolymphatic hydrox affecting to semicircular canal and on the second affecting to the utricular uh, hydrops. So 
these are the computations we see the pressure uh, in colors that will happen during our nube heat. You will see what happened during the endolymph in the endolymph during the IUV, IUV heat test. We have the impulse, the acceleration, great pressure, and now the decrease, the break, another peak of pressure, and we turn to normality. This is on a normal model. Now we move to a hydrops model. We can see that I present the <laughs> I sorry. Video is not working. No, nope, sorry. I checked this before. I sorry, but I have to move because we have nothing. But it's the same, and that, that the that I will we be will look better in the plots. We have here the, uh, the head velocity. Now, this is the pressure obtained from the model, the normal model. This is the pressure for uh, the high drops uh, in semicircular canal model. And this is the uh, pressure and the lymphatic pressure in the utricular model. There is uh, at the peak of the movement at the acceleration at the acceleration there is a higher pressure on cupola on the hydrops models now uh, we can, because we know the pressure we can the, despite we don't have uh, a cupola model we can extrapolate this to what will happen to the AA velocity so based, based, based in this uh, pressure values, we predict what will be the ocular response during the heat. As you can see, we will have an over velocity and an uh, velocity, peak velocity in this, pa in this in the patient wind high drop. We can extrapolate this also by calculation area under group, the gain values. So now we think the paradigm is this. Now we have IPU function between 0 and 0 0.8, and between 0 0.8 and 1.1 gain values. They are normal and probably, probably, over 1.1 gain values, we have eDrops results according to these uh, computational models. But this study have uh, some limitation is a very potent study, but we have limitation. We did compute the perilymph. We don't have a real model about how is uh, the high drops in vestibular organ. We don't have, uh, we assume uh, the endolymphatic, uh, the endolymphatic dynamic properties of the dolim the same as the water. Vestibular structures were considered as rigid, as rigid walls. We don't know we make a crystal polaris model, a finite element. We also use a rigid wall. And there is a wake, we use a wake model to uh, extrapolate the pressure to the edge velocity response. Finally, we don't have a neural novel, so it's unknown what is the, the adaptation effect. But this is 2020, we have limitations. Uh, this is just a pure fantasy. Well, we work hard after this, and we have published a series of cases. This is a patient during years, uh, several years. You can see how this nice velocity, this is not Google Sleep page. I cannot say to the same patient during years. Oh, he see, but right, well, okay, you can see. Now, the next step was an epidemiologic study. You can see that NH velocities are very much uh, significantly present in many years group. You can see that uh, also we have the, um, a, a clinical trial with glacial test and the diminution of these NH uh, velocities. But one question that everyone makes to me is, what happened when, with, with corrective saccades? Where, why there is no corrective saccades in these patients? Well, uh, you can read the Courtois paper. It's very well explained. They don't appear because we don't need. 
but not in LDK. There are some cases that we have Henae's velocity and compensatory aging movements. Thank you very much for your attention.